Hey guys, it's Ginger with Gingerly Designs and Soulful Things. Welcome. Today I'm going to be talking about acrylics too. It's going to be a little bit more information, unlocking some mysteries about acrylics that I have learned over the past 15 years with painting on a daily basis and all different types of acrylics that I've used from house paints all the way up to professional grade paints. I'll be showing you in a couple of different colors, a couple of different brands, showing you the opacity, transparency, talking a little bit about if they mix well, so on and so forth, all on some watercolor paper so you can see on the texture. So come along, let's get creative. Okay, so let's get started. I'm gonna show you guys a couple of things about acrylics that I have learned over the years. One thing that I use is uh, house paint, believe it or not. I start out with house paint sometimes. The great thing is, is that um, you can clean it up with water and it's got really good, um, it mixes really well with uh, other colors and also when you're spritzing water on things, it does really great dripping in the background. Um, it also has a tendency to separate, so keep that in mind but it makes it kind of fun and interesting marbling that happens kind of naturally. So house paint. Um, one of the kinds that I have is this brand called, uh, it's from Geary's Hardware. It's actually Benjamin Moore, which in my opinion, the Benjamin Moore house paint is one of the better ones that you can get if you're gonna use house paint on things. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a little bit of my finger and I'm gonna show you guys what these various paints look like when you spread it on some watercolor paper, which has a little bit of texture to it you can um, check out the transparency and the texture and whatnot and just even the intensity of the color. Um, this house paint's actually really creamy and it's really nice. Um, so that's a fun option, especially when you're doing large pieces because you can cover a lot of area with a somewhat inexpensive paint. Um, another option is this really great, uh, this brand happens to be Amy Howard um, at home, but it is chalk paint, which is really fun to use because it um, takes layers of paint on top in a different way than most other paints because it's made like chalk, it is chalk paint. And so it means that it's gonna absorb differently because it's chalky. Um, the Benjamin Moore incidentally drives more of a matte finish. Um, you know, when there's gloss and then there's satin matte and then the chalk are kind of the various levels of, um, of, of, uh, shine, I guess, sheen, if you would say. Okay. This is another Benjamin Moore product. And the great thing about this is that you can mix up color samples. And so you don't have to commit to a full quart or, or a gallon, obviously it makes it a little bit more economical. Plus you get to try out different colors that you're not sure if you're even going to like, but you're curious about. Um, incidentally, this Gary's in Denver and the Denver area, what's great is they sell them in these little sample sizes and they're like two bucks or something, maybe 250, something like that. And that's fantastic because then you don't even have to commit to this size, but this size really isn't that much. And I want to say it's like seven or eight dollars, but two dollars is really good and you get a good bit of paint. So I'm going to show you, this is also a Benjamin Moore product. Um, so it has the same type of quality and consistency pretty much as this top one because it's Benjamin Moore also. Um, but again, those house paints are really great for certain reasons because they're really good for covering lots of area. When you're doing large pieces in particular, they're really good because they have a tendency to separate. So they make some interesting marbling and um, they're really good with water because um, they are a little bit more thin that they'll drip really nicely when you spray with them. So, the other thing that I use is craft paints. These are just, you know, little 99 cent, $2, I think up to $3 with the Martha Stewart craft paints. Craft Smart, I believe is a Walmart brand maybe. And then Deco Art, you can find lots of places. Martha Stewart's a little bit harder to find nowadays. But craft paints, very inexpensive option, but also serves a purpose because lots of my whimsical pieces that I do, I end up using craft paints for. And obviously there's tons and tons of colors. And so if you're not super confident with mixing colors yet, you can always use the craft paints and they're a really good option because there's so many colors. Um, this is a green craft smart craft paint, which is, uh, like I said, I believe Walmart's brand. One thing that I do have to say is you have to always make sure to mix them well, shake them really well, because they do have a tendency to want to separate. And when they separate, they separate into a color and then this weird clear, but thickish liquid. 
And if you don't shake it up during the process of using the whole bottle, which these bottles sometimes will last forever for me, but other times, depending on the project, might only last a day. But if they're lasting forever, you're going to end up with a whole bunch of not as liquidy, not as, not as flowing of paint if you don't mix it because you're losing all that clear, clear liquid when it separates out. So that's a really nice uh, pink shade and that's a deco art product. Really good. Um, it has a decent bit of opacity. All of these so far, the house paints and the craft paints have a decent bit of opacity. Um, but they are a little bit thinner, like you can see with this Craft Smart one, that you can actually see the paper kind of through it, which I'll I'll show an up close picture of all of these to be able to compare, but you can kind of see the paper through the green. This is the Martha Stewart, which to me is pretty dreamy, actually, especially for being a craft paint. Um, her paints are really good, and you used to be able to get them from Michaels in all different colors and shades, but I'm not sure um, what happened with that, but they are um they're a little bit more difficult to find but when you can find them her paints are fantastic so those are a couple of options for craft paints and how they work and just kind of uh the the same thing as house paints they have a tendency to separate a little bit so they might end up you might end up seeing other colors that you weren't expecting to see but they're usually in the same family at least so it kind of causes some cool marbling they're also great for when you're wanting to spritz water um, they're pretty transparent, so if you just want to lightly brush it on, it's actually a good option when you're like going over paper or something like that. Um, lots of cool options with craft paint. Okay, this is the beginning of what would be considered um, a, at least a studio uh, grade acrylic. This brand is awesome, actually. I, another artist used this that uh, I learned from them and wanted to try it. I believe I got it off of Jerry's Artorama, but they're um they're a really great brand and they have some really nice colors and their their paints are really nice like they're very nicely textured they're pretty thick and therefore their opacity has a tendency to be a little bit higher um not as much transparency as the craft paint and the house paint but they're also not terribly expensive this is considered the smaller version of this there's obviously less paint in this but they're both the same texture and consistency and then they also have even one size up from this bottle also in a bottle and um i don't know check it out because their colors are beautiful and the texture is actually really good and again when you're painting like especially large pieces it's really nice to have um paint that's not super expensive so that you can cover more area even if it's your first coats because you know once you get that first coat down you might add some other touches and um and you can use more expensive products when you're adding those final touches to things but that's the lucas brand in their arctic color and um, this is the Lucas brand in their steel blue. Again, it's the same texture and um, consistency as that Arctic one. It's just a different color. Um, so it's really nice. This is one of my very favorite colors, actually. Love, love, love this color. Um, but you can see that uh, there, you can't really see the paper through it, which is nice. Because on a few, like on this yellow one, you can actually see the paper through it in some spots. And um, obviously, same with the green. And then, But this blue is really nice. Okay, so then we move on. This is the studio grade. Now I'm going to move on to what's considered the professional grade. And various companies will have different grades. Some of them will have, you know, they'll start out with like the student grade and then the studio grade and then the professional grade and so you just kind of want to look at that you do you do pretty much get what you pay for especially if you're going to start mixing your own colors and blending and whatnot um you do get what you pay for and you're gonna you're gonna um see a difference but in the beginning when you're first learning or like i said depending on what you're doing the craft paint or the house paint might work actually beautifully for your project but this is a Winsor Newton product, and this is their professional acrylic, and it's the Davies Gray, which I do love Davies Gray. It's one of my favorite colors, but I'm going to show you something, because when you take the Davies Gray out and you apply it, what you'll notice is, first of all, the opacity is very transparent, very, very transparent, and I put, I put a pretty good blob on there. But it's very transparent. The other thing is, it doesn't really look like the color swatch. So when you're buying these, you kind of have to be a little bit careful because you might not get exactly the color that you were hoping for. Um, I think that what they might do actually is put a 
brush of white down and then paint over it with, a, with whatever colors on the inside. So um, that, in all fairness to them, that might just look a little bit differently because they had a thick coat of white on there and maybe they put it, the paint on thicker, but it doesn't really look as exactly like the color swatch to me if you, if you ask my opinion, but it's a beautiful color. It is such a beautiful color. It's a gray, but it has a lot of brown in it. And so it's really, really lovely. And also the texture is amazing. It's just got a lot of transparency and, um, you know, be aware of that when you're buying certain things, because some companies actually do identify the transparency, which I'll show you that in a minute. This is the Windsor Newton Professional Potter's Pink Acry Professional Acrylic. And it also, you will notice, is pretty transparent. And you will notice, doesn't really look like the sample very much. Um, again, not sure if they're mixing these paints with white to get that sample swatch or I don't know how they got that color to be honest with you. Um, this Potter's Pink is gorgeous though. It is so rich. That is the thing that you will notice about these is they might not be completely opaque and they might not match their color swatch on their tube, but they are so rich and so beautiful. They're just, they really are beautiful, beautiful paints. Um, and for certain things are exactly what you need. Again, I'm putting a decent bit on my finger. It's thick, it holds up by itself, whereas those craft paints would kind of want to have a tendency to roll off my finger. This is their Raw Umber Light, which in their color swatch should be like a kind of goldish mustard color. But I'm gonna show you, not so much. It is gold and mustard, but it doesn't really match that. Again, I think the only way to get that is to mix what's in here with some white. So that might be that might be why. But also, again, beautiful color. Absolutely, like, so rich and just yummy looking because it's just such a beautiful color. You won't, I, I don't have other paints that can replicate these colors, these Windsor Newton colors. And so once you buy the color, if you identify what, what the color actually looks like in the tube when you start using it, you might just fall in love with it because there there's nothing else that I have that matches those that look in acrylics for sure. This is their Payne's Gray, which was one of my very favorite blues. Um, I have it in all different watercolor, different acrylics, different brands, um, pastels, all kinds of stuff because I just absolutely love it. Um, this Payne's Gray in particular is absolutely beautiful. It is so deep and so rich and just so... It almost could be perceived as being black, actually, if you put it on thick enough. And depending on what the background color is, it could almost look like it would be black. It is such a beautiful, beautiful shade of, of navy blue. But they call it Payne's Gray. And so it's a blue with a lot of gray in it, apparently, or a gray with a lot of blue in it. So those are the professional grade Windsor Newtons in the tubes. Like I said, just if you buy them, be aware that the colors don't necessarily match the swatch on the outside of the tube, but that they are gorgeous colors and it's worth spending the money for sure. It just might not be exactly what you were expecting. Now, I'm going to tell you guys about my, probably my very favorite brand actually when it comes to acrylic paints is Golden. I love Golden. Someone made a comment one time that that makes me a Golden Girl, which I think is kind of funny, but um, <laughs> I am because I love Golden. I like Liquitex a lot, but I love Golden. And um, and I like other brands as well, Sennelier, all that stuff. I, I like other brands, but I love Golden. Um, they've got a really broad spectrum of color options, and so if you're not confident with mixing, you can always, there's lots of options. But if you are confident with mixing, oh my gosh, they're just dreamy to mix because they just blend so well. Their texture is awesome. They're just a really, really good product in my opinion. Um, this is their fluid acrylic, which it says it right here on the bottle. This is their heavy body acrylic, and it comes in a tub. Um, they do sell the heavy body in a tube as well, uh, but I usually end up needing the tub because I use so much of it, um, especially once I fall in love with the color. A great thing about Golden is they put this little chart on the side or on the back of most of their products. Not all of them. It depends on the size of the bottle, but most of their products have this little chart. And what it shows you is the, the top gauge is the transparency and the opacity, and there's a little black dot or line that shows you if it's more transparent or more opaque. There, then it says matte and gloss, thin or thick, as in the texture, and low tinting versus high tinting. So can you mix other colors with it and change the color that, that exists right now in this jug? And so you can see that the low tinting, high tinting on this yellow one, this Naples, 
um, is a little bit more towards the high side because you can adjust this color a lot. Whereas on this smalt hue, it's low tinting because it's really hard to adjust this color. The other great thing that Golden does is they put these little hatch marks of black and, um, and in between it's the white background. And then they put a little swatch of the paint that's inside the bottle or inside the tub over those black hatch marks. And so it shows you how is it gonna cover darker colors and then what is it gonna look like over lighter colors. So on the small hue, you can tell it's a little bit more transparent than the Naples yellow is, which that is confirmed by their little chart. You can see. Um, <clears throat> plus on their swatch, you can see that the black is almost completely covered as well as the white, whereas this you can still see the black and especially the white through it because it's such a dark color on a white background. So anyway, I'm gonna show you. This is the tub and it's the small hue and it um, it is their heavy body. And I'm taking about the same amount, pretty consistent with the amount that I'm taking as I did the other colors. And you'll notice that when I put it on, it does have a decent bit of opacity, I mean of transparency, which is what it actually said, that it's actually got pretty low, not low, but on the lower side, when it comes to uh, opacity, therefore it's more transparent. It's more of the transparent side. But again, you can tell the richness of the color. Like you could probably almost come through and identify the richness of the colors to see which ones are house paints, craft paints, and on up to professional grade um, paints because it's just so saturated and beautiful. This is the Naples Yellow, which is a fluid acrylic. And it, um, it, I love golden fluid acrylics, especially if I'm gonna add water to anything. I just, I just love them. They're so fantastic. Um, they, uh, I use my fingers a lot. And so I'm always feeling the way that the paint feels and the golden just flows, the fluid acrylic just flows right onto the canvas or whatever surface you're working with. And it's just, they're just so easy to work with. They're great. So this is their Naples yellow hue. And you can tell by same thing it's it agrees with the chart that it is extremely opaque it's it's almost at the top quarter like the top three quarters of opacity and so you you can't see any of the paper through whereas in here you can kind of see some of the paper through it's a little thicker there but it's thinner here and this was the Benjamin Moore house paint you can also tell like the difference in richness even though they're two different colors they're still both this yellow and the richness of this is so much more present um, so that kind of is my explanation of the different types of acrylics that you can buy that I use and, um, how they work and why you would use them in various ways. And, um, again, apply them all with my fingers on some, um, watercolor paper so that I could show you a little bit of texture, show you what happens when you paint over texture with them. And, um, don't discount the craft paints or the house paints because really there's a purpose for them. And um, I use them all the time, but it's just, I have a tendency to use them in the background and the finer products in the foreground because I might as well let these amazing colors show. As you can tell, like this on this and this on that would just be such a cool, a cool uh, depth changer by adding all of those together layer upon layer. So that's acrylics in a nutshell. Oh my gosh, thanks so much, and I hope you guys learned a little bit today. Thanks for joining me, being a little bit creative, learning some stuff about acrylics. Hopefully I helped you solve some mysteries and gave you some tips and some advice. If you have any questions or requests, please leave it down below in the comments section. And also don't forget to like this video. And please go ahead and subscribe to my channel so that we can keep you posted on when new videos are being released and whatnot. Thanks so much, and you guys take care. Peace out.